people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I am your fourth generation witch and welcome back to my incredibly popular almanac series looking at all the traditions, the rituals, the spells and the witchcraft that you can do for the month of June. Now, as ever with these videos, what I'd like to do is to give you a general overview of witchcraft practices that happen throughout the month of June and any traditional spells and rituals that you might be carrying out. And then we'll go into a little more detail and look at the day-to-day -day witchcraft and what spells would work on what days. So with that said, let's look at the overview for June. And of course, June, really, we are at the height the floral season and it is about those flowers. June has a variety of names and but one of its most popular and endearing names is that of the rose month because of course this is the time when the roses flourish and are in bloom. Don't you just love a rose? We've got so many delicious wild roses growing at the moment and they're all coming out. Apple scented sweet briar, to the dog rose, to the field rose, to the plain old rambling rose. They're all coming into wonderful blooms at the moment, as well as those more cultivated and cultured varieties that are growing in your garden. Well, they're not growing in my garden, actually, because I, I've slightly killed them this year. If anyone knows anything about how to grow roses, let me know in the comments below. So uh, I really need some tips. The rose is, of course, celebrated everywhere, throughout every culture. It's not just our witches that have got involved. If you look at the tarot deck, you'll see lots of rose symbolism, and it normally implies balance when you're using it in divination purposes. The Christians had the rose symbolising purity and love, hence it was the flower of the Virgin Mary. There is a reason why the rose is the symbol of the Labour Party. There was an ancient poem, and the line from this poem goes as follows. Hearts starve as well as bodies, give us bread, but give us roses. Meaning, although you can feed us with bread, our hearts crave beauty and nourishment that way too. And this is the basis of British socialism. But you all know that there is no rose without thorn. And the tale of the nightingale and the rose, where the nightingale presses their breast against the thorn of the rose, and so their blood turns that flower red, is so beautifully told by Oscar Wilde. Go and look it up, it's a wonderful story. I used to read it to my children, although a bit gory, isn't it, really, thinking about it, but fairy stories normally were. The rose really is the most beautiful of flowers. Its scent lifts my spirits, and therefore I use it almost on a daily basis within my practice. For example, I use lots of elements of the rose, such as dried rose petals, or maybe a rose-scented candle, or even um, rose essential oil in my craft. I've made loads of room sprays, etc., using rose because I love it. It really aligns itself with my energy. And so this month is really when I am practicing rose craft at its best. The other plant that is in full bloom at the moment is the elder and elder flowers are one of my favourite of the foraging crops that I get. The best recipe that I actually possess is one for elderflower cordial because it starts at midday on a sunny day in June. Go out and pick your elderflower. Now any recipe that starts like that is fabulous already isn't it? But the elder tree is the witch's tree. It was thought to contain the spirit of the mother witch and so therefore you should never take anything from an elder tree without asking that mother witch spirit first because otherwise you can upset them. The name elder possibly comes from the Anglo-Saxon eld meaning fire because it has very hollow stems. The blacksmiths of old used to use those hollow stems to blow life into the coals of their fires and so it's known as the fire tree. It is, of course, beloved by the fae. Don't fall asleep underneath an elder tree. A, you'll upset the witch who lives there, and B, you might be abducted by the fae. Although, the other reason that you should sleep 
under an elder tree is because you might be able to see them. Elderflower also has hundreds of uses for it. One of my favourite is to infuse the elderflower itself in some hot water and then you put this in the fridge and it makes a really lovely soothing after sun spray. It's very gentle on your skin and actually it's quite good for eczema too and psoriasis and other skin conditions. We also have the very bright and jolly St John's Wort. This comes out around mid-summer, if not a bit before or after, depending on the weather conditions. However, it is a very witchy, superstitious, traditional plant that you would have cut down at midsummer and decorated your houses with for protection and to guard against malevolent spirits. But it's also a huge emblem of the sun and it's considered a plant that will bring you happiness. A lot of people are known to take St John's Wort to help with depressive symptoms. However, in the olden days, the gypsy culture knew very well that not just imbibing St John's Wort would help you with your mood, but also you could use its energy to bring happiness into your life. And here is a quick spell to do so. Take an orange candle and light it. Next door to this candle, place a bunch of St John's wort that you have picked when the sun is shining. As the candle burns down, make your wish. And then, once it's gone, hang the bunch above your doorway to bring that wish of happiness true. And the last plant that I want to talk about is the common or garden fern. Now, this is a bit of a weed around me. I can't dig them up enough. However, they are very magical and there's a lot of superstitions. So buckle in, I'll tell you a few of them. If you are travelling around from place to place and you see a fern, be careful not to tread on it because otherwise you'll forget your way and become fairy struck. When searching for treasure, carry fern leaves with you and you will be guided to it. So a great one for metal detectors, that I always thought. Ferns have a great correlation with Midsummer's Day. And should you cover yourself in the fern seeds, which are pretty invisible themselves, so good luck with gathering those. But should you cover yourself with fern seeds, you will be rendered invisible yourself. And finally, when you have your midsummer bonfire, if you throw dried fern leaves onto it, you will exercise evil spirits. June is, of course, named after Juno, the Roman goddess of marriage, and it is known as the month for marriage. Should you be married in June, you will have a long and happy pairing together. So, I thoroughly recommend getting married in June. Likewise, strawberries are out this month and if you find one of those double strawberries and share that with a member of the opposite sex or, or the same sex depending on your inclination, then you will fall in love. I presume with each other and not with just some other rando that turns up, but yeah, I presume it is with each other. So that is my overview for June. It is a month of flowers and these are the times when you should go out and pick them, especially at midsummer when they're at their energetic psychic height. Now let's look at the day-to-day -day witchcraft and get down to the nitty-gritty detail. And of course we're going to start with the 1st of June, because the 1st of June marks the start of the meteorological summer, if I've said that right, which just means it's summer. But we all sort of know that, don't we? So it's a bit of a rubbish date to start with. However, it is very much definitely the start of summer on the 1st of June. The 2nd of June is the day for St Elmo's fire. St Elmo's fire is a witch fire. It is a hugely superstitious phenomenon that does occur. It happens when electrical discharge or plasma discharge happens around a rod, i.e. it happens around a mast on a ship or a spire on a church or even a very tall chimney. And it has a load of superstitions with it. If you see one St Elmo's lightning strike, so to speak, then this is a bad omen. However, if you see two, as the Greeks called them, the Castor and Pollux of St Elmo's fire, then this will bring good omens. The 4th of June is the time of the full moon. There are many names for this moon. The Rose Moon, the Strawberry Moon, 
the mead moon, referencing mead, which is a drink made from fermented honey, or the dyad moon, which is an old Anglo-Saxon term, dyad meaning pair. The Wiccans call it the dyad moon, meaning the couple, which is about the god and goddess coming together, polarities coming together, because of course this is the month of marriage and you should hand fast during the month of June. This is also a Sagittarius full moon. Now Sagittarians are all about ambition, honesty and success. So should you be looking for a career goal? This full moon is a great time to carry out your rituals to help you down that path. The 8th of June is a divination day. This is all about whether the weather is going to be fair. Now, there are several things that you should be looking out for. One is if you hear the call of the green or woodpecker or the yaffle bird, otherwise known as rain bird. It means it's going to be wet in the foreseeable future. If it actually rains today, then we're going to have a wet harvest. So let's hope you don't see a green woodpecker or lots of rain because then it's going to be nice and clear and dry. The 9th of June is the luckiest day of the year. It's known for it. Should you have any gambling that you need to do, not that I approve of gambling to excess, but should you wish to lay a bet on the horses today, why not have a go? Because this is the luckiest day of the year. It's also incredibly auspicious this day in order to start new projects. So if you are due to start your job on this day, excellent, your job's going to go so well. If you're due to give birth on this day, you will have an easy labour and your child will be blessed. Make your plans to go ahead and start something new for today it will work. The next date I want to talk about is the 14th of June. If you would like a pet squirrel the 14th of June is the best and most appropriate day to take that pet squirrel from its nest and have it as your own. Apparently squirrels make great sports as a pet, um, but you will never have a single wool jumper not eaten left. I'd love a pet squirrel actually, I think they sound fun. The 18th of June is the night of the new moon. Each new moon has its own energy and own associations with it and this new moon is in Gemini, meaning that it's ruling the power of communication and relationships. You can set your intent and your spells and your rituals to improve your relationships, your partnerships or to call new partners to you. This is also the day to have a hand fasting ceremony it is the most auspicious day in the whole year for hand fasting, which is today. The 20th of June is the day that the solstice is approaching. So in order to prepare yourself for the solstice, you must clear out your hearth. This will set a new base for within which to relight it from the solstice fires that your community would have. It will also please the fairies. They love a clean hearth just before midsummer. And therefore, if you place a pair of your shoes by your hearth on the 20th that you've cleaned out and is all laid ready for the fae to come through, you will find that money will come to you for midsummer. The 21st of June is, of course, Midsummer or Litha. Litha is actually an Anglo Saxon term meaning month of the midsummer moon. So, I mean, Litha's much easier to say, isn't it? Yes, it's Litha rather than, oh, it's the month of the midsummer moon. This is, of course, one of the big highlights of the pagan calendar. And I'm not really going to talk about it here because there's so much to go into it that I will be doing its own separate video. However, I wanted to give you, just very briefly, a gypsy spell to bring you great luck for the future six months. I want you to take one orange, and some clothes. You will prick the clothes into the orange all over and then hang them up above your bed and this will set a spell to bring you luck for the next six months. The 22nd of June is when the sun enters Cancer. Now um, I liked this so I thought I'd tell you about it but apparently if you are a Cancer and I'd love to hear if you are uh, leave me a note in the comments below if you are in Cancer because it will make me smile if no one else but they say about Cancerians I should have to read it up the man as well as the woman shall have good fortune 
and great victory over their enemies. So don't cross a Cancerian because it won't turn out well for you. The 23rd is Midsummer's Eve. Of course, Midsummer is slightly different from the solstice. Solstice happens on the 20th, 21st. Midsummer happens on the 24th. And they're sort of two separate entities, but amalgamated into the festival of Midsummer, which happens throughout that week. Now, on the 23rd, this is Midsummer Eve, this was known as the Witch's Night. It is always the night for the big festivals when the witches are afoot. And this is the night for the witches' covens to meet up. There's the very famous Witch's Rock in Zenor, which is in Cornwall, which is an initiation rock. Should you walk around it nine times on Midsummer's Eve, you will know the ways of the witches. This was a big night for covens, but this is the time when everyone got together, renewed their vows into the coven and were initiated into it. So celebrate this night with all your witchy friends and initiate them into your coven. Fairies also are particularly active on this night and it's a really good idea that if you want to, I think in the old days they called it bind them to your service, but nowadays we might just welcome them into our homes and so tonight is the night when you do a fairy welcoming ceremony. One of my students the other day did a ceremony, it was rather lovely, she cooked some amazing cakes, they all had tea, um, they sat down, it was in the afternoon, she sent out invitations, it was great. She had a lovely time. I was quite jealous. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have minded going myself. The 25th of June is the end of the Midsummer Festival as a whole. And it is on this day, it is therefore considered that sea travel is now safe. So should you be worried about taking a sea journey, go after the 25th of June and you will find it a very pleasant time. And that is my almanac for June. What do you think? Is there any particular one of those rituals or traditions that you're going to follow? Let me know in the comments below. Do go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill for details of my coven meeting. Last week we had a great time. We all made our own spells to permanently help protect and defend our homes. And in fact, Marlena, you need to do that spell as soon as possible. It's a little reminder for you. Otherwise, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps my channel and enables me to carry on making these videos for you. And I will see you in a very short time.